Let's go. So, hello everyone again. So, um, as you know, I'm Arnaud Loré, the author of The Design of Web APIs, which was a uh, long time ago called The Design of Everyday APIs. Uh, you may also know me as the uh, API handyman. I'm a senior APR architect at Natixis, a French group providing banking and financial services. And my job is basically helping IT and business people understand and create APIs. Helping people to create APIs implies reviewing API design, and API design review is a vast topic covering many aspects from um, pure design concerns to cross-team governance and everything between. So if you want to learn more about the overall topic, you should look at my API design review or starter set. Uh, it's a talk that you can find on my blog. Today, I will focus on my journey to what I call the uh, augmented API design review world, which aims to make reviews more efficient, safer, and simpler. I tell you why and how I automate part of API design review using the uh, Open API specification and Spectral, a YAML and JSON blend type. Uh, when people want to create uh, a new API or modify an existing one, its design must be reviewed. Uh, to do a review, I meet the API team, they explain me what they want to do so we can discuss about their needs, and they send me their design, I analyze it in depth, uh, we discuss my feedback, they fix the design, and if needed, we cycle. An API design review has three purposes. First, ensuring that the identified needs are the real ones, and ensuring that the design actually fulfills those needs and also possible future ones. Second, ensuring that the design offers a good developer experience, that it is easy to understand, easy to use, and does not unduly expose implementation dates. Third and last purpose, ensuring that the design has the same look and feel as all of our other APIs, and so making our APIs even more user-friendly. And this is done by checking it conforms to our API design guidelines. That sounds like a good plan, so what's the problem with API design reviews? Checking conformance to guidelines means checking that each property name is in lower command case. Checking that schema names does not end with technical suffix such as DTO or BO. Uh, checking Russell's path structure, tracking non-evolvable array of strings, among dozens of other checks. Checking conformance of a small new API or a small modification is done easily in a matter of minutes. But when there are dozens of them, minutes become hours, and there is a significant risk of oversight because I'm just an average human being with a limited amount of concentration. And things get even worse when working on huge APIs. Hours can become days, and the question is not, will there be oversight when checking guidelines conformance, but how many? The problem with API design review is actually succeeding to avoid oversight and spend the less possible time on guidelines conformance dub checks. And on the other side, spend as much time as possible on tasks actually requiring a human brain, like working on the needs on developer experience. And how do you do that? By augmented API design reviewers. Hopefully, we don't have to become machines or cyborgs to uh, be faster and more accurate APIs and reviewers. All that is needed is a machine-readable API description and um, a small program called Linter. So forget wiki pages and other spreadsheets. Use the Open API specification to describe your APIs. The Open API specification, formerly known as the Swagger specification, is standard and programming language agnostic REST API description format. An Open API document can be either in JSON or in YAML format. It describes API resources, path, operations, response bodies, and any other thing you need. To describe data, the, API, the Open API specification relies on JSON schema, which allows to tell, for example, that uh, a user is an object composed of required ID, first name and last name, and an optional address property, which type is defined by another JSON schema. Now that we have a machine-readable uh, description of an API, we can analyze it with a linter. Instead of 
reinventing the wheel, I use Stoplight Spectral, which is an open source linzar that can analyze data such as uh, open, uh, uh, open API documents, async API documents, Kubernetes configuration files, or any other uh, JSON or YAML data. Linting an open API file with a uh, spectral uh, command line interface or CLI is quite simple. Open a terminal, type spectral lint, followed by the open uh, API file name. Spectral is able to uh, detect problems right out of the box without providing any other information than the API description file. Uh, for each problem, you get its location, uh, its level, the rules that detect the problem, and a human-friendly description of the problem. All this works right out of the box because Spectral comes with a predefined rule set specially uh, made to analyze open API documents. Obviously, your guidelines are probably not the same as the ones bundled in Spectral. And hopefully, you can design your own rule sets in order to check that an API design conforms to your guidelines. A Spectral rule set is a YAML file, uh, it contains a rules properties, and inside this rules property, uh, you will get uh, different rules, each one identified by the name. A basic rule is composed of three elements. The given property, which is a JSON path, indicating where in the document this rule will be applied. Uh, the current value we see here uh, targets the ID property of any reusable schema inside an open API document. The then property describes the controls to be done. Here the control is applied on the field type of the element which is found by the given JSON path. It consists in checking the field type value belongs to an enumeration uh, composed of a single value string. The enumeration function is uh, not the only available function. Uh, Spectral obviously comes with some others you can see here. And last but not least, um, the uh, last property of a basic spectral rule, uh, the description that explains what is happening. And so we say, okay, uh, all ID properties must be of type string. So let's now rerun uh, spectral again with our, uh, with our rule set. It tells us that on line 28 of the open API file, there is an ID which is not of type string. And indeed, in the reusable user schema, you see on the, on the right, uh, we see that the ID property is of type integer and not string. When I did my first test, I was uh, totally blown and totally convinced that Spectral was a must have to secure and speed up my reviews. Using Spectral looks quite simple, but let's now talk about, uh, about the real world beyond the hello world. Let's talk about how I actually build and then use Spectral rule sets. It would take a day long workshop to describe all the functions, tips and tricks I use to build uh, my Spectral rule sets. As I don't have a day for this session, I will focus on the two most important matters that uh, may not obviously come to our mind when uh, using such tools. I will focus on how to design rule sets and how to be sure they actually work. But still, while talking about these two topics, I may incidentally share some tips, but without going deep into details. I wrote a, a post series on my blog to share everything, so stay tuned. So, just like an API, a spectral rule sets actually need to be designed. You, you can just start from scratch and write random rules without uh, thinking about what you do. You need, you need to have a plan. If you don't already have API design guidelines, write them, at least a minimal version, version that you will expand when needed. Uh, look at my Lord of API Designs talk uh, to, to learn more about that. Once that's done, you can start to express your guidelines as spectral rules. But do not rush blindly. Just like when you represent uh, jobs to be done as a REST API, you have to think twice. You must ensure that your design is relevant, user-friendly, and maintainable. To do so, you obviously have to think about rule names and descriptions, but choosing adapted rule granularity, severity, and organization is even more essential. Let's talk about granularity first. If our guidelines tell that all responses are objects and not string or arrays, for example. 
and that a get slash whatever slash plural name always return a list of resources. And this list is represented as an object containing a required property named items, which is a list, a list of resources. And each items uh, in this list must be an object and not a string or a number. And when the response is a list, the return object may contain some information about pagination, like the current page and the total number of page. To check all that with Spectral, we could create a single rule named valid collection schema, telling that a list response must conform to our guidelines with a very long but explicit description of what is expected. This rule would target schema in 200 responses of get operation on path ending by plural null, thanks some magic regex filter. And eventually, in the then clause, we could use the schema function that checks a data structure conforms to a given JSON schema. And so we provide this function, the JSON schema of the expected JSON schema of the response. I wish I could have hours to explain that, but it's really important. Uh, so what happens if we run Spectra with a rule set containing this rule on this open API file having a get slash users returning an array of user? Spectra detects the problem, but what is the problem exactly? Is there a mistake on the pagination data or something else like items uh, which are not objects? We don't know. Maybe customizing the message to add the problems path and error message may give us more clue about the problem. Okay, so as we can see the user schema as a problem, object should have required property properties. If you're not uh, an expert of your guidelines, your spectral rule, JSON schema, and the open API specification, this means absolutely nothing. This rule is definitely too coarse grain. Let's split up in four smaller ones, uh, each one checking an individual aspect of what we have described earlier. Now that's better. We know exactly what the problem is. We know that our response list is not an object and it's not encapsulated. We know what, how to fix that. In my examples, we only have seen warnings, but a spectral rule can have different severities. Here's how I use them. An error, that's an actual error. It must be fixed without any discussion, like two or four no content returning data. Warning, it looks like an error, but it can be normal, fix it if needed. For example, a post request body without any required properties is not normal most of the time, but it can be normal sometime. Info. Possible improvement. For example, hey, what about adding pagination or filters? Uh, on get slash whatever slash plural name, which is supposed to return a list. Hint, that's an element that needs to be discussed by the API design reviewer and the API team. For example, the use of content type other than application JSON, like application PDF, that may require specific design and implementation because files shouldn't go through our API gateway. That way, and especially using the int level, I know where I have to focus my investigations and discussions. And finally, in order to be user-friendly, but most importantly, be maintainable, you have to organize your rules in various forces, just like you would organize a function in various libraries. Currently, I have 71 spectral rules organized in 10 different rule sets. Rules are organized based on what they test. Each rule set can be used individually. For example, if, if I want to check something like, uh, does each operation is covered by at least, at, by at least one or of two scope? I will use my security rule set. But if I want to use all my rule set, I have a main rule set you see here that includes all of our rule sets, thanks to the extends uh, property, which is a list of paths to other, to other local or remote rule sets. So, as you can see, you can end with many rule sets containing many rules, some of them being quite simple, but some of them can be terribly complex. How to be sure that all of these actually work? By doing tests, as usual. Here's the summary of the various test strategy 
I used during my journey while I, I was learning spectral. So at the very, very, the very beginning, so we, I had a single rule set. I created a single desktop and API file to check that all my rules were actually working. So I launched Textual with my rule set and this test file, and I manually check uh, that I get uh, every error I expect. Obviously, it became a nightmare because it was really hard to add new use cases into the uh, open API files and to manually check Spectral output because I had too many rules. Splitting my rule set in smaller ones was not only dictated by the need of organizing them, uh, it was also done in order to simplify my testing. So instead of having a single rule set and a single test file, I had many rule sets and many uh, test files, one for each rule set. But it was still painful in the end to add new test case and especially to manually check the results. Hopefully, Spectral is also uh, available as uh, not just library. Therefore, I created Mocha uh, unit test suites and used the spectral library in them. I created one test file, one for each rule set, still using an open API file for each one, but now I programmatically check that I get the expected problems. It's far better. I at last realized that some of my rules were actually not working at all. But even if it was better, using a single open API test file for each rule set and so testing all rules inside the rule set at once was too complex and prone to errors. That's why I got a level deeper in my testing strategy. I decided to test each rule in isolation with a dedicated input for each test. To do that, I tinkered with the results of the spectral parser to only keep a specific rule active and deactivate all the others when running a test. I also managed to be able to use partial open API documents instead of complete ones, making writing tests easier. As the number of rules and rule sets were growing, um, I was fearing to forget testing some of them. So I had it checked to ensure that I have a test suite for each rule set. And at the end of each test suite, I checked that each rule has been used at least once. This is not perfect, but it works so far. And as my testing became more and more accurate, I realized that some rules were not working at all because the JSON path in my given clause were totally missing their targets, missing some of their targets, or eating the wrong targets. So I got another level deeper, and instead of testing each rule as a whole, I did dedicated tests for, uh, for the given clause. To do those tests, I tinkered again inside the result of the spectral parser to retrieve the given JSON path of each rule. And then I used the JSON path plus uh, node library, which is used by spectral under the hood. Uh, uh, so I used uh, this library on some JSON input to check that what is returned by each JSON path is actually what is expected. The level of the given clause testing depends on the JSON path complexity. If there is no filters like the first one, uh, I just take that I get what I expect on a simple example. But if there are filters like the second one with uh, regex, for example, I check that I get what is expected, but I also check that I don't get what is supposed to be ignored. After all these evolutions, writing tests for my rule sets became quite simple. The test suite name tells my uh, spectral wrapper uh, which rule set to load. The sublevel test suite tells the spectral wrapper which rule should be activated. And then for each test, I usually four checks uh, based on fragments of uh, open API documents. I check that uh, the JSON path actually find what I need. I check that the JSON path actually ignore what I want to be ignored. And I check that the rule returns errors when I need them. And I, I, I check that the rule returns no error when I don't need them. And the final check consists in verifying that all rules have been tested. I have no more than 400 tests to check my 71 uh, rules. That makes me confident, and so I don't need to double check what has been checked by spectral rule sets. And icing on the cake, I can design new rules very quickly and very shortly. Let's sum up what we have seen about the design of spectral rule sets. 
create your guidelines in the first place. Ensure user friendliness and maintainability by choosing adapted vulnerability, severity, and organization. And on top of that, do not forget to test your rules like you would test code. Once you have a minimal rule set, you can start to use it immediately. Do not wait to cover uh, your rule guidelines. Using Spectral in your design and review process as soon as possible will help you to improve your rules, your design, and also your Spectral skills. It may also give you a few ideas about how to use Spectral in, in your review process, and that happened to me. Uh, so when I do API design reviews, I use Spectral in three different ways. The first one is very obvious. When I receive an API contract for review, I use the CLI to do a quick check and see how many problems there are. If I need to go quickly uh, uh, through all problems, jump from one source to another, I open the file in Stoplight Studio. It's a GUI with both open API and spectral supports, and I also use it when designing APIs, but that's another story. To make my rules available in Studio, I just need to add a .spectral.yaml file in the project. And uh, it's a regular rule set, and I reference my rule set targeting directly my Git repository. And so the problem list you see on the bottom right uh, show the problems detected by my rule set. I just have to click on each problem to directly go to its source. But all this only works when there are not many problems. If there are hundreds of errors, and that happens when I do a full review of a very old API, uh, the outputs of the CLI and the rendering in Studio is not really usable for me. I need to, uh, to have another view of, of the different categories to get started, uh, to do filters, in order to make a summarized, re a summarized review that will be the input uh, of a design workshop. Hopefully, the CLI can output the result as JSON. And I pipe that into JQ, a command line JSON processor that allows to do crazy stuff like transforming spectral JSON into a CSV file that I can import into a spreadsheet. Yes, a spreadsheet. If you want to learn more about GQ, check my blog. There's a post series about it. So I import the data into a good old spreadsheet and I can easily sort, filter, and get all the stats I need and prepare my workshop. This session was quite intense, and all this was only a brief summary of how I use Spectral. I use it now on all my reviews. It really helps me to make